I want to talk about how to attract a big buck to your stand location. Because it's all about attraction, right? Look online, you see all the scents that you can buy? All the food that you can throw out at a site? I mean, some companies sell deer feed. You can put it out in a pile. You can buy corn. I mean, I grew up in Michigan where it's a big baiting state. Carrots, sugar beets, apples. Used to be in the UP of Michigan. The Uper's up there, and I lived there for 14 years. My kids are Uper's because they were born there. I wasn't born there, so I'm not a Uper. My kids are, though. At least my three oldest ones. Autumn, Jake, and Sam. But when I was up there, they called the people that came from down below the bridge, trolls for one thing, because you live below the bridge, Mackinac Bridge, but you're also a sugar beater because the guys would come up hunting, bring sugar, sugar beets, throw them out in the woods. You want to attract deer. We have a beautiful water hole here. We call this water hole the beaver. We never seen a beaver there yet, but we're still waiting, but someday it might. Bottom line is we have water hole here. We have a mock scrape. Those are attractions. I love mock scrapes. We have one at every stand location. It doesn't attract deer here. It defines movement. The water hole. If we have deer that want to move over there, are they going to come all the way for over here for water? Now, sometimes they might. They're not going to come all the way here for a mock scrape. But bottom line is, there's so many products that we focus on for how can we attract deer. And most of them are gimmicks. Scents that you can put out feed that you can put out illegal in a lot of states, minerals that are going to be there and you're going to hunt over them and there's still going to be those deer that need minerals during the summer are going to be there in the fall for some reason. Scent drippers, whatever it might be. There's all kinds of stuff. Bottom line is, how do you attract deer? How do you attract a big buck to your stand location? I want to nail this concept home. You attract a buck to the stand location because that buck already had the potential of moving through the land in that location anyways. So a lot of us have it backwards. Well, this is a good tree. I'm gonna put a cool stand here and I can get into it and I'm gonna hunt it and I'm gonna attract deer to the spot. Food plots, you know I love food plots. I hunt them over occasionally. I shot Bo in a really cool little, he was a six year old, six and a half year old buck we'd followed for four different seasons. He was a really cool buck, shot him on a food plot. But he was moving through that food plot because it would have been a part of his natural movement anyways. It was on a bench system inside the woods. It connected to a long bench system just in the woods on the, uh, what would be in the west side or south side. There's a ravine that comes up so he has to pinch along that top. There's a lot of reasons for him to go through there in the first place. Inside corners, we have a stand we call Redneck Corner because the previous landowner had a redneck right in that corner, right in the middle of a food plot, trying to attract deer out into that corner. When really the perfect stand location, we turned that on to switch grass, got rid of the redneck in that location, got rid of the food plot because we don't want to spook deer in that corner. We want to be able to get around that corner. And the real spot where deer would naturally move is on the inside corner of the woods right there. We go into that X of movement. In this case here, Big bedding area that way, we have early successional growth area. Now we have added to that. Deer should bed over there anyways, so we improve it. We enhance that movement. Deer are going to a large food plot system over there that's about two and a half acres. We have bedding all through this bottom that we've cut and the other side, there's a big food source over there. So there's reason for deer to move through this bench system. They have a pinch point above that crossing down there in that really steep creek. They don't want to cross in areas down there. This is where they cross. So everything aligns. It might be that you have a thick layer of brush. And again, I love these mock scrapes right here. You can see this one right here. This, we usually put a camera or reveal right over there on that white oak. So many people want to take a tree, an area, and bring deer to that spot. When really the best way to improve it is you look at the natural flow of the land. It gets steep behind Dillon, open hardwoods. We're getting to the edge of cover. You can even see more green growth as we go further south. There's more cover, there's thick brush. We're coming to this outside movement. Big food over there, big food over here. This is the perfect transition. So once we already have that natural movement defined where deer should be moving anyways, then you enhance it. We enhance it in this place of the water hole based on where other water is. There's no water right here, so it's a great spot for a water hole. Always add a mock scrape, create more bedding over there, cut timber, improve it on private land. We're doing the same on that point over here and down below. So we're really trying to come to this edge, blow our scent up there, and then it comes into access. We can access through open timber. 
blow our scent into open timber. But again, everyone wants to attract deer to their stand when really the best form of attraction for your deer stand, especially for a mature buck, is just putting your stand in his natural movement that you have been taking place in the first place. So a lot of us have it backwards. You really want to make sure that you're following the natural movement, enhancing it where possible, and that'll really help you out on public land. As on public land, everything's all the same a lot of times. And so I love looking at public land, looking at those tops, look at where there's, if it's a May picture, for example, aerial photo, look for different colors, look for different size shapes and tops, some more smears of swamp where it's more blackish colored of maybe tag alder or cedar swamp. And then you have the big puffy hardwood tops where you see that all coming together, <clears throat> that's where deer want to move anyways. If you have a big beaver creek system here where deer can't cross, you know they're gonna be pinched down on one side or the other. If there's a stream falling in or coming into it, look for that crossing. You're looking at areas that deer would travel anyways. The inside corner of a field. Inside corner is here's the field. Field edge here, field edge right here. This inside corner, deer don't want to cut across the field, but they will cut on this corner and they'll go along the edge, along this edge, they'll cut the edge. So it creates an X of movement right on the inside corner. Kind of like I talk about redneck corner back there, how we have, it's a place where deer should move naturally anyways. You're just putting a stand there. That's your best form of attraction is using the natural lay of the land that's presenting yourself in the first place. And then you add these sweeteners to the movement, like mock scrapes, water holes, creating bedding areas if it's on your private land. And if not, still the exact same focus on public land. Where should the deer move anyways? If you have to add bait to a spot to make it a great spot, if you have to add a water hole to make it a great spot, if you think you have to add a mock scrape, add some scent concoction that you fell for. If you have to use calls, rattling antlers, grunt calls, bleats, to make it that perfect spot, then it's not a perfect spot. It should be a great spot to begin with. You're only adding the icing on the cake with those other attractions appropriately to maximize the use of an already great spot. So how do you make that great spot better? How do you attract deer to a certain spot? Find where it's a great spot to begin with, and that'll always lead you down the road to success, whether you're on private or public land this fall. Guys, it's food plot time, and I really urge you to check out our food plot company, Pure Wildlife Blends. It's called Pure for a reason. I invite you to check it out. We have food plot blends for all types, and we try to give you all this content on YouTube, articles on the site to help you make sure you not only do it right, plant it right, but you pick the right seed blend for your circumstances.